Hello everyone and welcome to our online service. It's the last day of January and we've just been through a cold spell but it does seem to be over for the time being. John told me when he was a kid growing up in Derbyshire he vividly remembers the big freeze of 63 going out sledging so many days. Uh, I don't have such vivid memories but I'm sure many of you have memories of that year. Thankfully we're not facing that. Snowdrops are out, daffodils are coming up and I have seen lambs in the fields. Many of you also will have had the Covid vaccine by now so there is lots of room for hope and optimism as we face 2021. Before we start the main part of the service a reminder to read about the different styles of services planned starting next week. We're encouraged to join in each week and taste these different ways of worshipping. We're all individual and we find it easier to connect with God in some ways rather than others. So it's, easy, it's good to offer variety. And there might be new beginnings and surprises as we sample the unknown. Certainly it was great to see the children and families so engaged in the lively service last week. Please pray for this in the coming weeks. On a practical level, the shop is in need of help on a Saturday, if anyone has a spare hour or two. And so to this morning, we continue to look at Mark's Gospel and the question of who is Jesus? The Pharisees said he was bad. Others dismissed him as mad because he claimed to be God. What is important is our reaction to him. Do we believe he is the Son of God, Messiah and our Saviour? as we come to worship and learn more about him this morning. Let's give our own personal response and answer to God. Welcome me. 
Good morning. Welcome to this part of the service this morning when we're going to be looking at, at a story that Jesus told from the Bible. It's from Mark's Gospel. And I like listening to stories. I like telling stories. I like reading stories, especially to my grandson. We're looking, his favourite at the moment is Zog. And Zog is a great story about a little dragon that tries really hard. But dragons are just in stories. But the stories that Jesus told that we call parables help us to understand more about him. They are stories, um, not about real people, but they're about real things and things that people would have seen around them and known about when Jesus was alive all that uh, time ago. So let's have a little listen to the story. It's from Mark's Gospel, chapter four, and it's called The Parable of the Sower. Jesus liked to tell the people stories. His stories had special meanings. One day he told this story. Once there was a farmer, he went to his field to plant his seeds and he scattered the seeds here and there. Here's a picture of the farmer. Our farmers don't work like this, do they? Um, they usually use tractors, but this was how the farmer would have sowed his seed in Jesus's time. Now, some of the seeds fell on the ground onto the footpaths. The birds flew down and ate those seeds. Some of the seeds fell in rocky dirt. They sprouted, but there were too many rocks. The rocks could not grow and get the roots, not the rocks, the roots could not grow and get water. So when the sun grew hot on them, they died. Some seeds fell where there were weeds. The seeds sprouted, but the weeds grew bigger and crowded them out. Other seeds fell into the good dirt. There were no weeds. The soil had been prepared. There were no rocks. They settled into that dirt where no birds could get them. And they grew and they grew and they grew. The people listening wondered about this story. What does it mean? They asked Jesus. And this is what Jesus told them. The seed is the news about God. The birds and weeds and rocks are like some people's hearts. They hear God's word, but they have their hearts on other things. They do not understand, they do not love God and they do not follow him. But the good dirt is like the hearts of people who do understand. They love God. God's love grows in their hearts like a beautiful, healthy plant. So that was the story. And Jesus wanted us to understand that he is the sower, God is the sower, and he sows his seed wherever he goes. The sower is generous and sends his seed everywhere. No matter where it lands, he doesn't hold back. God never holds back from us. He gives generously. He gives everything we need. He tells us all we need to know. And we can trust that God is good and that he gives generously to us from all his promises that he has made to us through his Bible. But God also calls us to be generous like him, to not hold back. He calls us to help him to sow the seed. So can you remember 
Can you remember what Jesus said that the seed was? Well, the seed is God's word. It's the truth about Jesus. It's the good news. It's the gospel. And there are many different ways of sharing this good news. We can share pictures. We can tell stories. We can invite our friends to come and hear about Jesus. And when we can open the church again, we can invite our friends there. We've seen things like the Advent Trail, all the windows around the village. The Wise Man's Trail, when you came to the churchyard. All these things share God's word. So in this story, we've we've seen who the sower was, what the seed was. And the final thing that Jesus talked about is the soil. And there were four different types of soil. And unfortunately, three of those types of soil weren't very good. And if that is our hearts, maybe we're thinking, well, maybe our hearts aren't good all the time. Because sometimes we can't help but being like those different soils. Sometimes, like seeds bouncing off a path, we just don't want to. Sometimes, like the rocks. We start off with all good intentions, but then, like the seeds are surrounded by the weeds and the thorns, well, we can get distracted by other things that are going on around and other things and things that we want and think we should have. But Jesus wants us to have hearts like good soil. And when we're struggling, not when we don't have a heart like the good soil, we have to talk to Jesus because he will help us understand how our hearts are like they are. Because we are, we know that we are blessed by a generous God. And because of that, I really want to know more about him. I hope you want to know more about him. I hope you ask questions about Jesus and want to read your Bibles and find out and hear more stories that he told. Like I say, sometimes it's easy Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's good to do things that remind us how Jesus is and how Jesus wants us to be. Like doing good turns, like phoning the person that you haven't spoken to and you don't really get on with and just asking them how they are. Because when we are, know that we are loved by a great and generous God. We want to love others and we want to show and share that love with other people. Now, I'm sure there are things that you love doing and maybe even though this is a really difficult time when we're not being able to see people that we normally do, we can't go to school, Maybe um, mum and dad are finding it really frustrating that they can't go to walk, work and get out of the house. But we have to think of the good things that we can do. And maybe you are good at craft. Maybe you like doing craft. And I have shared with you what you need this morning to do some crafts. So hopefully um, you can either do it along with me here or you can take some more time later and spend a bit of time doing it this craft. Now this craft is uh, is a mosaic and I asked for you to have some different seeds and I've collected my 
bits and pieces with different seeds. I'll show you them now. Here they are. These are my seeds. But you can have all different, any types of seeds that you can maybe out of the garden. Maybe like me, I've, I've borrowed this, these seeds and they'll go out for the birds later on. And I wanted to uh, make a picture with these seeds. So we'll need some glue. This is some glue. It's uh, called PVA glue. And I've got a couple of paint brushes to put it on. So we need a bit of card. Here's our bit of card to make our picture on. You can draw any picture you like, anything that you like. I've drawn this one, which is a picture of some flowers. There's not many flowers around at the, the moment, but I have. And if you go out on your walks, you might be able to see some flowers like this, like little primroses growing up uh, in the banks around in the woods. So we want to um, use our seeds. And you can see I've already started this. I've put some seeds on this leaf and I've made the center of the flowers but i'll show you how to do it you just get your glue and your paintbrush i mean if you've got something like a prick stick you just do that straight and then you just paint your glue where you want your seeds to stick so i'll just let my glue drop in here i'll do this one here and I'm going to do these. I'm trying to be quite clever and put my glue just in where these petals are. But when you do whatever your picture is, just fill in the outline. So I'll just do this one flower. And this flower. There we go. So you can see where I've put all the, the glue and then I'm going to get some rice because that's what I had and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of this picture like this. You can see I'm using a tray and that means I can contain the seeds. They won't go everywhere. We can collect them up and uh, shake them back into the pot. So there's my now this is where you have to be a bit patient you really need to allow that glue to dry a little bit so that the the seeds will stick and they don't come off but this is what your final picture can look like so mine's all my different seeds all my different um colors that i've put on i've ended up with a mosaic of my flowers and you could write along the top here uh, the parable of the sower or you can write something like God's love grows in our hearts and along the top of your picture and this is the good thing about these pictures because if you have used seeds and you get tired of the picture after a while you can cut it up all the separate seeds and you can go and you can plant them in your garden and see what happens see what grows especially if you've used the sunflower seeds you can see them grow at all so thank you for that let's just have a, a little moment of choir of prayer thank god for his great love for us heavenly father we thank you for your story this morning about god's generous love to us help us to know that love and to share that love with people we know amen
around Somebody reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 11 to 18. Day after day every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest, that is Jesus Christ, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool, because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 4. The parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60 or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding, otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. 
when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they fall quickly away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even a hundred times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. We're now a few weeks into our series looking at Mark's Gospel, and you may remember it begins by Mark saying that he's writing about Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus the Messiah. And the first few chapters of Mark's Gospel set out for us, unpack for us, um, why Mark is saying that. Um, it begins very powerfully in the first chapter, um, where, where after Jesus' baptism, um, we hear the dove, see the dove come down and hear the voice, um, uh, you are my son with whom I, who I love, with you I'm well pleased. Um, a very positive affirmation of who God, is, of who Jesus is there. Um, but as we go through the rest of the chapters, we see what God, what, sorry, what Jesus is doing um, and what Jesus is saying and why as a result Mark says he's the son of God. Um, so far we've looked at Jesus recruiting the disciples. We've looked at instances of uh, Jesus healing the sick, driving out demons. And as, as Jesus has been doing that, um, he's, he's antagonising the Pharisees and the church leaders. Um, they don't know who Jesus is, but they clearly don't like him. He, 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 he keeps bad company. He's with um, sinners and tax collectors. Um, he uh, doesn't respect the Sabbath laws. Um, and more importantly, from their point of view, he blasphemes. He says he's forgiving people's sins, and, and in their eyes, only God can do that. And we see in chapter 3, verse 6, then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill him. So we can see that Mark's gospel is leading to Jesus' death, and the signs are already there. Um, but before we get there, there's a, there's a lot to learn we go, as we go through. And today we're looking at Jesus as a teacher, as a wonderful teacher. Um, over the years, over the generations, many people have realised that Jesus has been the greatest ethics teacher of all time. And, and at the time he was recognised as a, a good teacher. We read in chapter 1, uh, verse um, 22, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority. So he is an authoritative teacher. And, and today's um, reading, we're looking at Jesus as teaching through parables. Now, we know parables very well, so I'm not going to spend time just simply repeating what um, is, has been in the reading today. If you remember in the reading today, Jesus went through the parable, or, or told the parable, and then he went through and explained it to his disciples. So, so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to try and do a look at some three things that I think uh, are interesting, at least interesting to me, and I hope they're to you, uh, about this parable. The first is the general idea of a hidden meaning in a parable. Um, that's obvious to us because we we know so much about parables, but certainly wasn't obvious to people in Jesus's day. And then second, how do we unpack, how do we understand that hidden meaning and apply it in our own lives? And then thirdly, what do we learn if we put ourselves in the position of the sower? Okay, so what is a parable? A, the New English Dictionary, Collins' New English Dictionary, describes a parable as a short story that has a moral or religious meaning. And, and that's right, but I think it's not quite, quite, quite full enough. Um, if we look at um, the way Jesus introduces the parable and ends the parable, I think it's quite interesting. Chap uh, verse 3 says, listen. And then uh, verse 9 says, he who has ears, let him hear. So it at the beginning and end of this parable, and you, you see it similarly with other parables, uh, Jesus is saying, is giving us a command, listen. Um, he, he's, he's bookending this, saying to us, Take, pay careful attention to this. It's not what you might understand. Um, everyone can hear 
the story of the farmer sowing his seed, but not everyone will hear the true underlying meaning of this. Take care, pay attention, um, because there is an underlying um, hidden meaning in this story. Um, and whilst, we, as I say, we know that because we've, we've been taught about parables since we were knee high to a grasshopper, so to speak, but um, the disciples didn't recognise that. Um, when they first heard these parables. Um, they, if you remember from the reading, af after Jesus had given the parables, t told them the parable, they gathered round to talk to him about the parable. And in verse 13, he says, don't you understand this parable? How, will, how then will you understand any parable? So clearly it was difficult for them to understand this parable. And Jesus is saying to them, this parable is, is more than just a story about a farmer. It's, it's actually a story about God's word and the way God's word will be heard by people and accepted into their lives. Some will accept it willingly and be productive Christians and others will not. And he's saying as well, what are the rocks and weeds in your lives? Do you worry too much about your careers, your finances, your possessions? In your behaviour, do you forgive people readily enough? Um, do you, are you too self-centred? Do you focus on, uh, dwell too much on the past rather than thinking about the, the today and the future? So for each of us, there's, there's a hidden meaning in this. And we can't gather around um, and ask Jesus for what that hidden meaning is. So we, ha we have to study, we have to think about that. And we can, we've got um, to help us to do that the, the Bible with Jesus' teachings in. So we can use that to help us understand the meaning. And we can pray to Jesus and ask him through the Holy Spirit to, to bring out that meaning to us and bring out what our response should be to that, um, to, to that, to that parable. Um, it, perhaps in relation, if we can go back to the parable of the sower, it would be very much asking him to show us what, what we can do to move away take out the rocks out of our lives, take out the weeds in our lives to make us more effective and productive Christians. And this idea of productive, being, becoming a productive Christian led me on to think about um, the sower in the story and whether or not we, we could put ourselves in the position of the sower. If you remember at the end of, of Matthew's gospel, um, when Jesus is leaving the disciples, he says to them, go and make disciples the so-called Great Commission. And we who are Christians, once we've accepted Jesus into our lives, essentially pick up the baton of, of that command as well. For many of us, me included, it can be quite, quite a challenge. But I think the story of the sower, the parable of the sower, can help us. If you remember in the story, um, the sower scatters the seed with wonderful generosity. He doesn't focus just on putting the seed in the fertile ground. He throws it around. And in the same way, I think Jesus is asking us, telling us, commanding us through the Great Commission to tell our story, tell uh, the story of our faith and what difference it's made in our lives to anyone who will listen. Not just focus on the people who we think we can, we can make into or we will help become Christians, but, but to, to, to everyone. Um, and once we've scattered the seed, once we've told us so, we shouldn't worry. It's not for us to worry about it. Um, God will provide the sun, bring down the rain. He will provide people that will help nurture um, that seedling and, and, and make it productive and effective. So if we're talking to people who seem to be unresponsive to our story of, of our own faith, um, we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry. Maybe at that particular time there will be others who are going to be more effective. Maybe those those others may will will we'll, we'll help produce seedlings, young Christians. Maybe um, next time, next sowing season, we'll be more effective. Or maybe, and maybe at the moment, we're just being asked to be around to nurture the, the young Christians, the people coming through, with a loving heart, with a welcoming frame of mind as, the, as, as we see them. There's lots of ways we can encourage them in, in, in their journey of faith. So let me just recap quickly on what, I, what I've been saying. Um, we'll be looking at Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel is about Jesus, the Son of God. 
and we're learning as we go through why Mark says he's the son of God. And we're looking at his wonderful teaching today. We're looking at the, the way he uses parables. And parables are short stories, but they have a hidden meaning. And we should be looking, we should be praying, we should be thinking about what that hidden meaning is and what our personal response should be to that hidden meaning in, in the parable. And, and finally, we looked at the idea of us as sowers of seed, as us telling people about um, uh, our, our, our faith, our, our faith in, in Jesus. And that we shouldn't be worried if we're not always um, well received in that. Um, the, the, the story of the sower shows that some people, some seeds will fall and, and not grow productively. Um, but we all have a role to play in producing a productive growth in the kingdom of God. And we should be, we should be obedient in the way we, we um, go out and, and tell the story of our faith. As someone said to me some while ago when I was struggling with something, John, don't worry. God knows best and he will do the rest. Thank you.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for your help through these strange times with COVID-19. Help those who've lost their livelihoods. Help the millions around the world doing their best to manage and roll back this dangerous virus. Help the families trying to earn while educating their children at home and families unable to help each other and the many who have died from the virus. So much ease out of balance. Pray for those with the burden of decisions as to our public health. Lift our eyes to the mountains from whence cometh your help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, though my eyes I thought were open, only now do I truly see that all my life you were the answer, you were just waiting for me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mindful of the Holocaust Memorial Day this week, Lord, forgive us should we give space to fear, negativity, and hatred of others, simply because they are different from us. Through our prayers and actions, help us to stand together with those who are suffering, so that your light may banish all darkness, love will prevail over hate, and good will triumph over evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, both here in Bath Forward and throughout the world. Pray for our vicar and church wardens and our neighbours. We pray for them, not only with our words, but day by day, moment by moment, to the things we do and the way we do them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our patience as we manage change to who we can see and hug. How great and how wonderful the joy of that eventual meeting will be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in our community who suffer in mind or body. In particular, we bring to you Alicia and Natasha Cavendish, Diane Turner, Sally Dean, the Barrett family, Jason and Val Stone, Adrian King and Wendy King, Joyce Shield, Anne Harris, and Faye Hall at Shockerwick House, and Bishop Peter. Remember others known to us who need our prayers. Pray for those who care for them and their families for your comforting presence to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for those in our community who have died recently. We remember Shirley Penn, her family and those who grieve for Shirley. We remember others we know who have died and their families. Let them know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world which no darkness can quench. Grant us, with those we remember, a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we have worshipped, listened and prayed this morning. I hope we have all been able to affirm in our hearts that Jesus is the Son of God and our own personal Saviour. In one of the Alpha Talks, Nikki Gumball says, 
that just as the answer to the question, are you married, is not sort of, but a clear yes or no, so the same is true of the answer to the question, are you a Christian? He argues that there is no sort of Christian. So let's go out into our week clear that we are loved, accepted and saved by Jesus. And that when asked, we can answer confidently, yes, I am a Christian. And if you are in any doubt at all, please talk to someone. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.